Now this is the GIS News for Monday, November 25th, 2013. I am Abigail McIntyre. In the headlines, Phase 3 of ECCU Policyholders Relief Program begins. Vincentian Prime Minister says it cannot be business as usual in Liat. And Pan American Life now operating in Grenada. Details are next. <music> World Bank friendly countries all helping Grenada's economy to rebound on the shoulders of a structural adjustment program and we call upon to play our part in Operation Economic Recovery. The conversation stays positive and goes national once again as the social partners present the fourth National Social Partners Forum. This time, the spotlight falls on Grenada's homegrown program with IMF support. This Tuesday, November 26th from 8 to 10 p.m. Players Level 1 Conference Room near GFA Office National Stadium. Panelists representing the Government of Grenada, Conference of Churches, Grenada Private Sector Organization, Trade Union Council and Civil Society were live on national television and radio as the conversation stays constructive and goes national on Grenada's homegrown program with the IMF this Tuesday, November 26th from 8 to 10 p.m. Players Level 1 Conference Room near GFA Office National Stadium. Come and have your say. people will benefit from Phase 3 of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union Policyholders Relief Program. About 18 million EC dollars will be paid out to BICO Flexible Premium Annuity and Executive Premium Annuity Policyholders. Each policyholder will get 30,000 EC dollars. In 2009, the governments of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, the ECCU, launched a strategy to deal with policyholders who were left in the cold by the collapse of BICO and CLECO. If it wasn't for this intervention by the governments, then policyholders were likely to get back five cents on the dollar. Late November last year, the first phase of the ECCU Policyholders Relief Program was launched, where over $4 million was spent to pay back some monies. Then, in March this year, another the sum of four million was spent again in payments. Now, about a year later, since phase one, 600 people will benefit to the tune of 18 million dollars. Across the ECCU, it's 3,000 people at 91 million. This phase will involve the payment of $30,000 to each individual with flexible premium annuity and executive premium annuity policies. This phase three only applies to individuals. Individuals who have flexible premium and annuities, um, executive flexible premium annuity policies, um, all of them are entitled to up to 30,000 EC dollars per policy. Persons who have uh, their policies in US dollars will similarly be entitled to a maximum of EC 30,000 dollars per policy. So this is great news for policyholders who have been waiting to hear uh, when next um, the program would continue. And more importantly, it provides some liquidity for persons who hold uh, policies with sums exceeding 30000 and who have not yet been addressed. Chairman of the ECCU Policyholders Relief Program Committee, Timothy Entwine. I think everyone knows that the governments of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union have been in negotiation, discussion with the government of Trinidad and Tobago in respect of support for this program. And as funds become available, we plan, design, and execute phases 
based on the monies in hand. We would have liked to do a little bit more at this time, but we felt rather than continue to wait, we should at least, least make available some resources so that at least people could get some of the money, uh, access to some of the money. The government is particularly concerned about everybody, but particularly concerned about pensioners, for example. There are persons whose entire life savings are in British American, for ex uh, in this instance, and um, who have no liquidity, uh, who save, work hard, save their money, and who now are really facing uh, enormous hardship. And so the idea is to at least provide some resources. Some of these people may have 100,000, maybe 150,000. At least they get 30,000 now. And that is, uh, that's an important, um, we think, a very important development. When policyholders apply, they will be asked to deduct $30,000 on any future payments they will get, he explains. So let us say I have a policy for $100,000, for example. And I am receiving now 30000 It means I have a further seventy inside. I cannot be paid twice for the same thing. So what will happen, and by that I mean when the next payment is going to be arranged, they will take out 30 from that. So the maximum you could get in the next round would be 70 because you already got 30 from your 100. If we don't do that, when the time comes, you'll have $100,000 to still collect, which obviously is double count. And not only that, we don't have the money for that. So as you get your check, you'll be asked to give up the equivalent, the exact amount of 30000 on any future claim that you may have with the company. And that's fair. It's a deduction. It's a deduction. It's a deduction, that's what it is. But people need to understand that. We're not asking you to give up all your rights. No, I am not, I don't know how much you will get back because I'm not suggesting you will get back the entire 100000 I don't think you will. But whatever it is you're going to get back, that's to be decided by the courts and so on in the future. What I know is that you're getting 30 in your hand now, you will, you will release 30 from any future payments. Um, and they refuse? Yes, yes, yes. This is entirely voluntary. So people can refuse and say, well, they're not accepting that. Obviously, if, not, if, they, if they refuse, they don't get paid. Mr. Antoine agrees it's been a long road, but believes the committee has made some significant strides. I know it's been a very long road um, for all of us, policyholders, uh, as well as those of us who are working on this problem. Uh, January will be five years since British American essentially collapsed. Um, and um, may I say that I'm speaking to you here in my capacity as chairman of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, Core Technical Committee on Insurance, uh, which is a committee that advises the governments in the currency union about, about these issues, both British American and CLECO. Now, this afternoon, I'm speaking only about British American, because on the issue of CLECO, that is still a work in progress with the government of Barbados, and I'm not yet in a position, we are not yet in a position to make any further announcements, but we are working on this issue, and we know there are several Grenadians, many Grenadians, who have an interest in the CLECO um, portfolio. They have policies there, and they also would like to know what is going on. And as soon as we're in a position to provide additional information on CLECO, we will. Since the process of paybacks have started, more than 80% of policyholders in Grenada have received some relief. Shareholder governments in regional airline LIAT had planned for losses of 35 million EC dollars this year. But the reality is they are $5 million higher than that at just over $40 million EC dollars. That was the picture painted by Vincentian Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, who was the guest speaker at the GCIC's Silver Anniversary Business Awards. Details in this report. Dr. Gonzalez's presentation was centered on air and sea transportation in the OECS region. To effectively convey his message, he looked first at the state of the economy in the Caribbean and the OECS, pointing out that the region is still struggling with the effects of the worst economic recession in 100 years, a sharp increase in oil prices, low or no growth, as well as high debt and problems of financing deficits on overall and current accounts, among others. But a major positive, he says, is that ECA, the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority, responsible for regulating civil aviation in the OECS, is enjoying Category 1 status because of the region's institutional and legal framework. Despite its struggles, LIAT, which operates in 22 jurisdictions, has been going strong for more than 50 years. 
the shareholder governments, St. Vincent, Barbados, and Antigua and Barbuda, recently took a decision to refleet the Dash 8 aircraft that are about 20 years old. Dr. Gonzalez says it costs more than $100 million to refleet. What is the future for the airline? He says it needs to expand beyond its currently served 22 jurisdictions. Riyadh has to go to other places in order to get the mass base to make it a profitable airline. Means that it has to spend more money in order to make money. You're familiar with that in business. We need to go to a second city in the Dominican Republic. We need to go to Haiti and maybe even reach Jamaica. We have to go to Panama. We have to go into Central America. And we need to make the connection from Odole in Guyana to, to Venezuela and down to Brazil. Because we can bring our tourists through the various points. Because we need to go into Central America and South America. And we are searching for a strategic partner and possibly to have regional jets. While not beating up on any one airport in the OECS, the Vincentian Prime Minister said none is efficiently run, and he suggested ways in which this particular problem can be addressed. Why don't we, within the context of a union, why don't you have a holding company and put all the airports in one holding company and let the individual airports be subsidiaries of this holding company? And to get an international management company which has links with an international airline to manage all of our airports and to bring additional aircraft capacity to our countries you're not going to get an airline a management company in, in argentina or in brazil or indeed in qatar to come unless they're, go they're not going to come for Grenada alone. They're not going to come for one million passengers or 700,000 passengers. It doesn't work their while. But if all of us can have a company and one company across the board, we will be able to attract additional aircraft presence because they would have an interest, Keith, in bringing the, in, in bringing the, the airlines, to bring in the passengers. Let's face it, all it has to do is for us as heads of government to agree on this damn thing and leave the lawyers to do the work. Dr. Gonzalez gave an undertaking as chairman to continue reforms for the airline, but pointed out that it cannot be business as usual for management. The pilots have to have a greater understanding as to the difficulties our region is in and not at the first opportunity to seek industrial action. You know, vanity is a hell of a thing. And a lot of times we fight among each other, not because we can't solve our problems, but we want to see who is stronger and bigger and badder. You know, that's the attitude. We have to cut out the vanity, which is a curse in small islands, in small communities. Awarded for excellence at Saturday's ceremony were Tambran by Tambran for environmental excellence, Dive Grenada, Corporate Social Responsibility, Southern Electrical Company Limited, Service Excellence, Grenada Distillers Limited, Exporter of the Year, Baron Foods Grenada Limited, Manufacturer of the Year, Mark Wilson, Young Entrepreneur of the Year. Cheryl Nayak-Compton, Businesswoman of the Year. Isla Consulting, Rising